Hello. Good, I could say good afternoon or whatever time it is with you. Hello, I'm Tim. I'm G4EOA. I've held my call sign since way back in about 1974. But the purpose of this video is to introduce to you simply one of the, the most beautiful and last analog receivers made with digital readout. This is known as the Marconi Marine Apollo, and it was the standard receiver installed on ships from about 1973, perhaps 1972, onwards until the early 80s, when it was replaced by the Eddystone EC958, which was um, marketed under the name Nebula for marine radio purposes. So this receiver uh, is one which will process single sideband, it will process CW, Morse code, It'll process FSK, frequency shift keying, and it'll also operate with external beat frequency oscillators. I sailed with this myself when I was at sea, as will loads of colleagues, and I'm sure that you will fondly recall the fact that it is fairly complicated. So you have a technical description manual, you have a book of drawings, which includes every circuit diagram, and then if that's not enough, you have an installation manual on how to install the thing in the first place on the ship or in the coast station. So I thought what we'd do, instead of wading through the technical manuals, is we'd have a look at the front panel and I'll tell you a little bit about some of the uh, work that I've had to do on it to restore the receiver and a little bit about its history as well. It is actually, as I said, one of the last conventionally designed receivers. I have to pat it because it's such a nice thing. And, and it's housed, this one particularly in the, in the cabinet, I've worked with this in consoles, in screen boxes and in metal cabinets like this. I acquired this set probably 30 years ago. I acquired three, no less than three at once, Apollos. Uh, one I let go to a so-called friend who never even had the decency to thank me for it uh, in writing. And two I kept, particularly to put one together out of two. So this is the result, and uh, in no particular order I'll go through it. Just to refresh your memory if you've seen one before, if you haven't, to introduce you to it. This is a multi-band receiver which operates from 15 kilohertz at the LF end of things, the lower frequency end, up to 28 megahertz at the upper end, the range being selected by this switch here. So for instance, I've just switched, in, uh, switched into 675 to 1400 kilohertz and um, up here it's on 6 to 15 uh, megahertz. This switch here it operates this control for tuning and if I turn the tuning control and hopefully you can see on the readout you can see it incrementing or decrementing and this control switch over to high stability then controls this one over here this tuning control high stability giving you the necessary stable frequency to resolve single sideband not a technique that's used nowadays because we've got extremely accurate oscillators but this in itself is very interesting the more astute of you will have spotted, a, and it's an old joke this one, the oven light here on the front. Now, we always used to say when I was studying and, and uh, we'd cook our pasties, being in Plymouth, we'd cook our pasties on, on the oven. But in fact, the oven refers to a circuit which houses an 8 megahertz oscillator. It's temperature controlled at between 60 and 65 degrees C, depending on which one of these sets and which serial number you get. And that is used as the frequency from which all the others are derived. So it is the most fundamental uh, requirement for it to be f f stable at all times. Now, uh, as I said, it's got general purpose tuning, high stability tuning, which implies it's got two local oscillators and there's two, uh, two IFs as well. One IF being at 100K um, and the other one at 1. 0.1 megahertz. I've never suffered from breakthrough with it, 1.1 megs, because that's bang in the middle of the broadcast band for AM, but uh, it's always not responded to that. It's a belt and braces piece of kit. It's got um, a receiver protection unit in it, so you don't need to worry if you've got an amateur radio shack like I have sitting next to the receiver and you inadvertently left the receiver on the same frequency you're going to transmit at because the RPU, the receiver protection unit, will kick in. It's a little circuit which senses the voltage level on the aerial, increases the bias on some diodes, which then automatically shuts down the aerial input and disengages the aerial via relay. Now, a couple of things I wanted to point out. Actually, there is still one fault remaining on this. I don't know if you can see this on the counter. I shift the counter. 
your lovely clear readout, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we get multiple lighting of the Nixie tubes in here up until we get to 9. And that fault is thermal or capacitive, one of the two, because it will shift as the receiver's been left on. The oven light here is lit because at the moment the oven is being heated. The minute it reaches temperature it will go off and then it will continue to fluctuate on or off depending on what the bimetallic temperature sensor is doing in the oven. <clears throat> Over here, well, we've got, uh, for those of you who copy Morse code, a beat frequency oscillator. We can, we can find some, some CW to pick. And if I change the BFO, so it's a method of changing the note of the Morse to make it more acceptable, more palatable to your ear. Over here we have the noise limiter, which uh, is a circuit that separates spikes um, and will suppress large voltage spikes. At the moment it just suppresses the audio level slightly because there is no spike. And then it's selected in the middle here, the mute control, which shuts the thing down. And various AGCs, we've got AGC or automatic gain control on or off, and you can select a short or a long term time constant on the circuit. So we will remember our theory of minus T over CR, E to the minus T over CR. Over on this side, the display can be switched into semi-permanent, so short, medium and long, it changes the gating period, but generally most people leave it at 100 hertz, or you can change it and just display the last few digits, should you so wish. And then for single sideband reception, now there's an important point to mention if you're going to use this for amateur radio purposes, uh, there is no standard of which sidebands used in voice for amateur radio, so, but it tends to be by a uh, convention that we would use um, lower sideband for up to about seven megs and then 14 megs and up upper sideband. Now, marine radio is standardized on transmission of upper sideband. And so this set process is upper sideband. And if you use the mode control here, to select A3J, single sideband suppressed carrier, that will then replace the carrier in the circuit to resolve the upper sideband via a crystal filter. Actually, this is such a good set, you can also resolve the lower sideband if you just stay in on intermediate or wide and you use the variable beat frequency oscillator in replacement for the clarifier there. Over on this side, RF gain, radio frequency gain, altering the amount of amplification on those first few amplifiers at the front end of the, of the circuit. And then the audio frequency gain, which can be varied. In other words, people would say volume, but it's not quite the same thing. So I got this out of the cupboard in this, this period of shutdown, lockdown. Uh, we all ought to be trying to achieve something. Um, and so my effort was to drag this out and get it going again. Quite apart from anything, the front panel had 30 years worth of gum on it. And I used a professional panel cleaner, an aerosol one made by Servisol, to, uh, to clean that up and it came up beautifully. Uh, faults, the first one was the oven light wasn't lighting. And that was a really interesting fault because the set was still working, but the oven wasn't heating, but the stability of the set was not quite right. I didn't notice it at first and eventually I realised that the oven light wasn't lighting. I changed the lamp in the receiver that brought that back to life. And believe it or not, I spent ages going through the circuit diagram, tracing this, that and the other, cold checking, putting it back on, live hot checking, so on. And eventually I got to, I kept returning to one tap of the power supply transformer. Uh, and I kept thinking, it can't be the transformer. Please don't make it be the transformer because that's uh, going to be very difficult to a source of spare, even though I've got a spare set. But it wasn't. It was very interesting. It was an open circuit fuse holder. Not a fuse. Gave all, so you text the fuse, that's all right. But it was open circuit fuse holder. I've actually changed the fuse holder, changed the fuse. That shifted the fault. We have the usual thing, dirty slip contacts, as you would expect on the tuning controls because it's been sat there inoperative for so long, 30 years or 20 years. Crackling AF gain controls, more dirt, more service sold to clean that. That did that one beautifully. 
And we also had to, or we, that's the royal we, I had to go through and sort out the loudspeaker, which was resonating, bouncing around a bit because the pattern was loose. But superficially, uh, those were the only faults. There are a couple of things I'm not happy about. The counter fault is one, but that will lift in, in due course. And I'm not so sure that there isn't a little bit of extra noise being generated by the AF gain control. And that's something which needs to be looked at. The actual circuit itself, or sorry, the set itself, beautifully made inside. Uh, the counter to drive this lot has eight separate boards. Then there's the left-hand side, which includes the RF, uh, the major um, AF board and power supplier in the middle. And then you've got the right-hand side of the set for high stability. So it's a lovely thing to work on. We'll have a look inside in a minute and can point you out uh, a few more bits and pieces to do with it. But in the meantime, this is serial number 1806 Apollo, obtained a long time ago via Marconi Marine's East Ham Depot, and that's a long story in itself. And um, I introduce you to it, tell you more next time. So this is G4EOA saying thanks for watching, see you next time.